Today I'm going to be talking about my financial goals. I hope to break it down and reveal a lot of what's going on behind the scenes and what I'm really pushing for. Now I don't think I've actually mentioned these goals in too much detail before and I think one or two of these goals I haven't actually mentioned at all before on the channel so hopefully you'll learn something from it but it's very likely that I'm going to piss a lot of people off and that's because the way it's going to seem and the way the goals are set it's going to seem very arrogant. You might go well I've worked for 40 odd years and I've only just now retired. Now it's important to understand that my goals are deliberately aggressive. My goals are deliberately very, very hard to achieve. They're not completely unrealistic and they are certainly possible, but it requires a lot of work. Now, if we're talking about net worth goals, if I said, oh, I wanted to save 10,000 pounds in five years, for some people in other parts of the world or even in the UK living in uh, worse situations, that's a formidable goal. And the beauty of personal finance is that it tailors to each individual. Now, myself in five years, if I could own only managed to save £10,000, I think I'd be a bit upset with myself. And you might say, well, that's privileged. Well, it is. And quite frankly, I've got the opportunity, so I'm not going to waste it drinking alcohol all the time on weekends, because quite frankly, I'm not a chump. Right now, so when we jump into it, right? My first goal is but originally, and it's very likely I'm not going to hit this goal anymore, but I have ambitious goals, because if I don't set these ambitious goals, uh, at least I'm going to try my hardest to see what I can achieve in this time. And if I don't achieve it, Oh well, but at least I said, you know what, I gave it the best shot I could and in five years time, I'm probably going to be better off for at least trying. That being said, my first financial goal is that by the end of 2023, I wanted a net worth of six figures. Now, as you can see in the markets, it's not going too well at the moment. In fact, I'm probably less than a fifth of the way there. Now, if we'd have taken into fact my deposits before my portfolio losing value, my total net worth would be closer to 40% of the way there, but certainly a hell of a way off considering it would only have a year and four and a half months left. That being said, it was purposefully ambitious, nor could have I predicted such a bear market in this time. And it wasn't really a strict rule where I was like, right, I have to hit this certain amount of money by this time, but that was the overall uh, what the amount I wanted to get to. That was a very ambitious figure and I likely won't hit it, but maybe I'll hit it in two, three years time. And at that point, at least I could say, yes, I've sat back and I've done the work and I've achieved this. Now, you're going to be going, okay, well, it's all well and good trying to reach that net worth, but what are you going to do to achieve that? Well, I'd like to increase my income. So for those of you that don't work, I currently work in finance. Now, initially I worked in hospitality for a pub and I did shift. So when I started the channel, I had a lot more free time as I was doing night shifts in a pub. And it also meant that I was earning less money. Now I'm working in finance, very closely tied with operations and certain roles as a financial controller as well. I'm earning a little bit more money. Now in this regard, I'm trying to do as much work as possible. I'm trying to absorb as much information as possible and therefore say that I'm delivering this value, at which point I'm looking to organically increase my income as much as possible in this time. Now in five years time, I want to be earning a salary of about £60,000. Now at the moment I'm just over a third of the way there. My salary is about £23,000 but that's not including any form of bonus, that's not including any other additional work, it's not including YouTube or anything so my overall income is probably about half of what the goal is at the moment. So I've got a big way to go but in five years I think that's more than possible and I think that's quite a conservative goal by all means. Now some people as I say won't get this opportunity to earn that much money and that's fine but as I say I've got to push myself for very ambitious goals otherwise I'm not going to push myself at all and I'm just going to end up regressing it in the future. I personally feel that no time should be wasted and right now in your 20s this is the best time to build a foundation so that then you can go and enjoy life a bit more in 5-10 years time. So that's one of my goals. I want to deliver as much value as possible in the workplace, look for um, you know opportunities to take on more responsibility, to really improve my skill set and make myself marketable to high value individuals or firms so that then they could see myself as an individual and go okay you know what like, he's got this skill set this skill, this skill set and this set of tools and in fact this is such a unique skill set that we're willing to pay a higher premium for this person and therefore we're likely to hire him and he's likely going to have a bit more pricing power on his services so there we go that's the second goal there i want to be achieving that level of income of about sixty thousand pounds in five years and let's set it in stone by the end of 2026 that's how much i want to be earning now the third one is another net worth goal and this is more of my medium to longer term goal and again this is heavily ambitious now for reference at the moment i'm 22 i'm 23 in november of this year so 
My goal is by the end or by the age of 30 or the end basically of 2029, I wanted a net worth of seven figures. Now, it's important really to explain the logic behind this answer. At 2% dividend yield or a 2% withdrawal rate, effectively at that point in time, I would be able to reach a level of financial independence, if not a little bit more. Now, at 2% yield, yeah, I'll be drawing about £20,000 a year in income. Now, this would be enough to be able to coast. And it's not the idea of saying, okay, you know what, I'm going to build up as much wealth as possible and then retire early because, quite frankly, it's not about that. I enjoy working and I'm happy to continue delivering value in some way, shape or another. I think work is very important, but it's also how you use it. And you've got to enjoy also what you do, or at least once you've built the money, you can t- pivot in that direction. So once I have that level of net work, for instance, uh, net worth, sorry, that's the point where I'm going to be like, okay, you know what, what do I truly want to do? What am I going on? Am I enjoying what I'm doing at the moment? Okay, yes, I am. Well, I'll continue going down this path. Or I might go, you know what, look, I've got seven figures in the bank. I've got enough money. I could go work in a cafe a few days a week. I've got enough money to pay all of my bills. And then I'm going to work on my own business, creating statues out of marble. Now, by all means, I can't do that, but the option is there, for instance. So it's that freedom, that financial independence, which is an important milestone to reach. That said, I don't set any goals longer than that time period because they're no longer goals, they're dreams. If there isn't a a set of plan or action towards anything further, it's, again, a dream. It's not worth my time or mentioning. That being said, I plan to be invested in the markets for many, many decades, well, providing as long as I don't get hit by a bus or come off the motorbike in a lethal accident, which, again, could be some serious foreshadowing in this video who knows because that is the risk you have to take as a motorcyclist the point stands that is to say right i'm putting this in place but i've also i'm prepared to be invested for the very long term and i'm not going to just give up or stop once i reach these goals i want to keep pushing on because compounding is extremely important another financial goal is i'd like to be able to be on the property ladder within that five year period as well now this might mean i could own an investment property or it might mean actually that I own my own place. Now in the way directions are going, and I have got a property investment on the way, which I can't talk too much about at the moment, but it's looking like in the next two to three years, it providing this one pays off, that it could be likely that I could be getting involved in a partially owned uh, property investment. And at that point, that would give me that point of being on the property ladder. That being said, if I had enough cash flow or income through rental properties, and I've got enough to da- uh, tax deductible expenses, then I may choose at that point to not own my own property that I live in and instead rent in more desirable locations or where I've got more flexibility of not worrying about things like if a boiler goes in my own house, less stress. That would be more ideal. And then I could become more of a nomad because I like the idea of potentially being able to travel to where I need to be given the circumstances. And if we go back to that third goal, for instance, drawing down an income of about £20,000 per year in about 10 years' time at the current rate of inflation would probably be not much. But if inflation starts to normalise, at that point, it's just about a survivable sum in the UK to live on. I think you could reasonably live on the breadline with that, for sure. I've definitely done it uh, before. And at the same time, I'd likely uh, travel the world a bit. And with that kind of money, especially in places like Southeast Asia, where I've been before, such as Thailand, I'd likely stay over there, rent a place, chill out. And if I, for instance, was doing YouTube, it would give me that opportunity as well. So to recap, I'm ideally looking for two net worth goals. I want to hit £100,000 by the end of 2023, seven figures or £1 million by the end of 2029. I want to be earning £60,000 in income by the end of 2026. And in that same time period, I want to also be on the property ladder in one way, shape or form. Now you might go, why is he telling us this? What does it matter? Well, it's for information. It's for transparency, but it's also for accountability. I've now said this online. I've said that I want to achieve these goals and now I have no excuses for backing down from them so it's a form of self-motivation as well and that is critical in this day and age where it's so easy that people can slump sit on their phone scroll through social media all the time like a boring person doing absolutely fuck all with their lives if you're sat there going through social media for more than 30 minutes in any given day you need to seriously sit down and rethink your life and honestly go what are you doing Is there something you could be doing better with that time? Could you be working out? Could you be working on one of your hobbies? Could you be delivering more value or learning something? Could you be reading? Quite frankly, sitting there scrolling through social media going, oh wow, this girl's got a cute uh, face, skinny waist and a big bank. I don't know what that means. Go away. No one cares. Get off of social media and do the work.